Hello, I'm Anxious Cynic, and welcome back to another Minimator tutorial. As you can see here, we're uh, starting off on a new project in Minimator because today we're going to learn about importing and making custom schematics and objects for your animation. And what we're going to do is use a car as an example. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and go in here. We're just going to use the default plane background here, uh, or ground. And what we want to do is go to scenery we're going to import a new piece of scenery so as usual that does nothing so we have to select what we want so what we're going to do is i actually created something in a minecraft world and we're going to import from that so this should come up and we're going to select our world in my case i put it in this one and as you can see here they have this nifty little doodads going on here so the first thing we're going to do is import the car model now <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. You can see it here. This is a very poor model. This is just to illustrate the idea. This is just an example. Uh, I just threw it together real quick for the sake of this tutorial. And there it is. Boom. It's a beautiful car. You can barely tell which is the front and which is the back. So a few things I want to cover here. Uh, this is going to be retextured, uh, probably in a future tutorial. So that's why it's made with this. I basically have used wool to color code what I want to be, you know, something else. So we have white wool for the basic body of the car. We have red for the trim and orange for the doors. And we'll keep glass as it is because that's how we're going to do it. There's any number of ways you could tackle that if you wanted to, but we're just going to do the most basic direct, you know, import a schematic from a Minecraft world. Now you could also download your own, like uh, someone else's, uh, and have a much better one if you don't think you can build something good enough. Uh, and scale it down. Usually, obviously, the bigger it is, then the more detail you can get. Things like that. But that's for another day. For this tutorial, we're just going to use this very poor basic car model that I'm just swiveling around for no reason. All right. So we have the car. That's great. But what we want, and as you can see here, is I put one door in. That's the passenger door. Now, I could have left that out, but... I didn't, because we only want to use the driver's side door. Now, this is, of course, the driver's side door if you have the uh, driver's side on the left side, as we do here in the States. Of course, I don't mean to be presumptuous. All right, so we're going to go ahead and import the next piece, and that is going to be our door. God, it keeps coming up behind the window. I apologize if that's a little bit of a thing there. Okay, so as you can see here, here's a wheel, and this orange thing over here is our door. So we're going to go ahead and import this, make that, like we, technically we don't have to really make it, so precise, but just to make sure we don't get any unwanted effects. All right, so while we're here, let's go ahead and drag this over. Okay, get that there. So there's our door. And the reason we're doing this now, again, you could do this in any number of ways, but this is the simplest way. And what we want to do is like, we want to be able to animate that door. We want to be able to open it and have the character get in, things like that. So it can't be part of the schematic because you can't move any of these parts individually. Each piece of scenery that you bring in is its own whole piece, so there's no moving parts. If you want a door on a cabin, then you need to make your schematic without the door and then add the door in Minimator so that you can animate it. So, we got the door. Now we're going to go into this next piece of scenery, this new one, and we're going to import from world again. Oh, hey, it came up on the front of the thing now. Okay, so here we go. Now we got our wheel here. It's a very basic poor wheel. Once again, the larger the scale, then the more detail. This is just very, very basic. There we go. And there's our wheel. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, we have a little mistake there. I didn't uh, adjust that. Let's go and fix that. Once again, a lot of small errors, but you may run into it yourself. I'm like, what happened? And now you know. You learned from my mistake. There we go. We got to go to this one. Bring it up out of the sand there and just get our wheel. There we go. Now we got a wheel. And it could be a little big. Once again, doesn't matter. We're just going to scale it. So let's go ahead and rotate it 90. And so we have one wheel. That's, I don't think that's enough to make a car drive. So we're out of luck unless we duplicate it. So one thing we have here is our custom rotation point. This isn't a big deal. It's about where we want it, but as you can see, it is kind of on one side of the block. We could adjust that. Let's see, which one is it? It's going to be our Y-axis? No, it's Z-axis. Okay. All right, so we bring that. What is it going to be? Maybe eight? Now, this, do this doesn't really matter. 
Ugh, if I could talk. But, oh, maybe 10. Okay. Just to make sure, you know, it's in the center. It helps us to work with it a little bit, maybe. All right. So what we want to do, first we're going to have to drag this up so that we can work with it. All right. And then we're going to take this and we're going to bring our wheel and try to kind of line it up and position it where we would want it. And of course, we're going to have to scale it down. Uh, if you don't want to scale it on all axes, then of course you can uncheck this button here. I don't know if we've covered this in a previous tutorial, but you have a scale in all directions at the same time. If you do that, it's going to scale it on all the axes or axis. I don't know how to say that still. Anyway, but if you do this, then you can scale it just as you need to. And of course, if you want something to be round, then you need to scale two of them evenly. Right now we have X and Y, and that's controlling the height and width that we want. And maybe we want to just leave the tire there, or we may want it to be slightly smaller, but not uh, at the same as the uh, X and Y. So let's just make them 0.5 and 0.5. That's pretty small. It, it might clip a little bit. Once again, this is just going to be a really rough uh, example here. And we'll make that point, and eh, we'll make it a little bigger, 1 point, or 0 0.8. And that way we'll, the tire will be a little bit skinnier than the body of our car. So there we go. We have that. And let's just line it up here. And of course, again, this is very basic, very rough. If you wanted to add like axles and suspension and all that stuff, I don't even have like a, a bottom of the car in. It's just the body here. So we have that. So okay, we're good to go. Let's save. There it is. And let's go ahead and line up our door just to get it out of the way here. Don't need this door in my way. All right. Whoa. Hey, I think I actually almost got that perfectly in one shot. All right. So let's bring it up. Let's come over here. Get it lined up about as good as we can. Hang on. Let's make uh all right. Now that we have the wheel position, actually, let's go ahead and do something. Oh, I actually should have done that first. Okay, <laughs> we're going to parent it, and we did not rename our things anyway, so that's good. All right, so there we go. Got it parented, and apparently it was actually set up pretty well for us. All right, so we got that parented, and now we want to parent the door. We'll go ahead and do that, and that way, if we move the car, <laughs> then everything else moves with it. Now, that is a very important thing. You don't want to get that one all screwed up on yourself. Let's make this about 50, and that way we can, this is what the whole point was, this is what made me realize my mistake, is we want to be able to move these to even numbers to make it easier to line up with our schematic here. So, if I make that 30, that might be a bit much. If I made it 29, 28, 20, okay, we got to go higher. 35, 32, looks like maybe 32 is even, even and lined up. All right. Let's bring you over. All right, I'm not going to worry about making this one too precise now because what I want to do is actually make the door a little thinner. So which axis is it? It's going to be our x-axis, x-e, whatever, 0 0.8. Eh, it could probably be a little skinnier than that. Let's go 0.5. All right. And then, you know, it depends on if you want there to be a bevel or not. Once again, we're just operating on the idea that this is what we're using. Obviously, you would hopefully have something a little better to use in your animation. But there we go. Uh, another thing to note is all of this could be done. Like, you could completely build a car and make it look totally, like, non-Minecrafty within Minimator. This is just the easiest way to do it if you want to have a Minecraft animation with a blocky, like, car that looks like you build it within the game. Now, I don't know if this qualifies as that, but just bear that in mind. All right, so we have our door. And another step that I've missed is we want to change the rotation point. Because if it's going to be a door, it needs to swivel probably over here. You want, like, depending on which way you want the door to open. I'm just going to go with a basic car design and have it open on the front here. So what we need to do is go ahead and move this over. Let's make it about zero. I guess that lines us up pretty well. And that doesn't really matter, actually. We can leave it right there. That, you know, I could bring it up just so it would make a little more sense or something, but I think we're good to go. Let's make bring that back over. And let's bring you over. What would it be? It looks like maybe negative 32. 
All right. So, if we add this and we want to animate it, let's go ahead and go up a few frames here and let's save our project. Keep that in mind. You Like, Minimator does make uh, backups for you, but you always want to try to make sure you save your work so that you don't have to go through the hassle of trying to load a backup. And if we did that, then we open our door, and that's what happens. Door opens, and then your guy can step in or step out, whatever the case is. Let's go ahead and remove that. All right. So our car is basically built and all set up. He's good to go. Ready to rock. So, problem is, <laughs> we don't have this. Let's go ahead and rename you Will. We'll go ahead and rename you Door. Now, once again, this is something that should have been done in the very beginning. I apologize. Car body. All right. So car body, Will, etc., etc. So what we want to do is go ahead and duplicate the will. We'll drag this one back. Like so. Looks like it's uh, pretty well lined up well enough. And what we're going to do here is duplicate this one. And bring it over on the x-axis. There we go. And let's see. This one's at about 40. What is this one? Negative 42. So what happens if we make this one 42? It sticks out a little bit. All right, so those numbers aren't going to be relative or whatever. Or maybe they are relative. I don't know what words I'm using. I'm using words and they're not working. Okay. So there we go. Let's get that one. We're going to duplicate it and bring it over. And what we'll do is steal the coordinates from this one. We have it at X 38.8. I'm going to click on that. Control C to copy it. And then I can click on this one. Control V to paste it in there. Now, they may not be perfect, but these two wheels on this side are in the basically the same exact position, and these two wheels on this side are basically in the same exact position, if I could talk. All right. So there's your car. It looks beautiful. I would pay 100,000 pennies for this car. <laughs> All right. So now, you know, you want your car to move. First thing we're going to do Let's go ahead and bring this down, line it up, and we're going to want you to be something like that. We don't have to line it up exactly because the wheels are going to be spinning, and uh, it may, you know, need some finessing once we get that going. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click on all of our wheels here. Basically, we can drag over and get that, and then let's say, let's just go way out. We'll go about seven. Hey, come on. All right, well, we'll go as far as the minor mirror will let us. It's not letting us go beyond 280. We'll go to 280. And what we want to do... Oh, man. I have made a bunch of mistakes. Okay. This is riddled with mistakes. I hope you're able to learn something from this. So you don't want to select your keyframes because we covered that before. If you had those selected, then you can go anywhere in the timeline and those are the ones you'll be affecting, not any new ones. So you want to use your shift click and click over here on the bottom left, and you'll see now we have all of our wheels selected. Not you, I don't want you selected. There we go. So we go as far as we can. My goodness. Oh my god. I hope this works. Alright, so we have all of our wheels selected, but not the keyframes. So as soon as we make a change, there, we have new keyframes. Alright, so... Looks like if we rotate in this direction, the wheels are spinning. So as you can see here, this number is going pretty crazy. Let's just make it, let's go about a negative 1,000, and we'll see what that looks like. That is pretty dang old slow. All right, so now we can select these keyframes now that we've made them for each wheel, and let's just make it negative 5,000. See what that looks like. That's not too bad. I think I want it to go just a little bit faster. Let's go negative 7,000. All right, so there we go. We have our wheels moving. Everything's great. They're just consistently spinning and going. And let's just go about to the same frame here, 280. And what we're going to do, now this may, you know, this would be a timing thing you may need to work out, but we're just going to take the car, just moving on straight on over. So have it go about to negative 2,000. All right. Let's see what that does. 
it's it's moving a little bit slow uh, for the rate of the wheels here, but uh, let's see if we can see if we can come in on our car here. All right, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set something up real quick just so we can really get a good idea of what this looks like. I'm going to put in a camera here. I'm going to put a keyframe in, and I'm going to parent this to the car. And then we're going to reset its position, and we're going to go to our camera, bring it out a lot. <laughs> All right, here we go. And let's do like this pretty good pretty good all right so camera's parented and now you can see down here in this window let's actually make it a little bigger man i am being forgetful today i apologize but hopefully we're covering the points we need to cover and there as you can see <laughs> we have our little car let's go ahead and like give this camera some movement so that we can actually uh kind of see a little more of what's going on here uh, let's, let's bring it up a little bit and let's make it kind of move around just a little bit like that. All right. There you go. It's a car and it's moving. I don't know how those wheels work because there's a lot of friction going on there, but somehow it's rolling. Somehow it's moving. You got a door that you can animate. You got the wheels you can animate. And of course, um, if you really want to get detailed in your animation, you can take these and I don't know if this will work if you have, let's see. So I've selected both of the front wheels and let's say at a point, maybe around here. Whoa, where'd you go? Hey, come here. All right, maybe around uh, this point here, we want them to turn. See, there you go. And uh, like this would obviously, I think take a little bit of uh, some advanced animation to kind of get a turn like this to work well for you, but if we, uh, let's bring, come on, oh, there we go. If we watch this, you can kind of see that the car turns. This sort of turn, obviously I haven't changed it to go anywhere. It just kind of rotates. It hasn't, it's not actually turning as though it naturally would, but you get the idea. You can make the wheels turn and you can have the car turn and like go different places, do that sweet overhead shot you want to do of the car moving through the city or whatever it is. And there it is. That's it. That was a lot of basic stuff that took a long time to explain because I'm terrible and I made a bunch of mistakes. But I hope you learned something. I hope that helps. Uh, next tutorial, we may go into uh, custom textures and we'll make this car look a little bit better. Not a lot, but a little bit better. Whew. So that's it. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful, at least in the sense that it might give you some ideas. <laughs> And this is an embarrassing car. Uh, overall, probably an embarrassing tutorial. But there it is. It is what it is. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope I'll see you back for the next one, which we may be covering retexturing. All right. So I hope I'll see you guys in the next video.